The history of space exploration is riddled with stories of satellites and probes going dead after their useful lifetime or before that, and also sometimes spectacular failures of spacecraft before their missions even start. But there have also been somewhat mysterious incidences where a spacecraft will completely lose contact, sometime for long periods of time, only to somehow wake back up and begin transmitting again. This doesn't happen often these days because there are things like batteries and physical limitations that prevent spacecraft from spontaneously starting to transmit again after years, but there are past configurations of satellites powered usually by solar panels that can and have woken back up, and just such an occurrence was announced in late June. This time the satellite is known as Relay 2 and was launched by NASA in 1964. The two Relay satellites were experimental communication satellites, and Relay 1 has the distinction of being the first satellite to transmit a U.S. television broadcast across the Pacific. Both satellites only operated for a few years in the 1960s before falling silent, until now. It seems that Relay 2 somehow briefly managed to transmit again after six decades of silence. The actual signal was detected in June of last year and was a complete mystery because the astronomers at the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder, or ASCAP, that picked it up noticed that the signal, which only lasted 30 nanoseconds, was incredibly powerful, like outshining everything in radio in the sky while it lasted. It could not have been from deep space, because the radio telescope, which consists of an array of telescopes, couldn't focus on it, indicating that it was close. They were later able to determine that the signal was from Relay 2, but this made no sense. The problem is that no equipment aboard Relay 2 could have produced this pulse, ruling out that it was a deliberate transmission from the satellite. So what caused it? The scientists were able to come up with two hypotheses. The first is a micrometeorite hit. Under the right conditions, a micrometeorite can strike and create a cloud of plasma that can create an electric field on the surface of a satellite, which can emit radio. But this is rare, and the burst was unusually powerful for something like that. The more likely possibility is an electrostatic discharge on the spacecraft, where two different but nearby metal surfaces on a satellite gain different electrical charges, and at some point a discharge happens. And given when Relay 2 was constructed, it was built out of metals that may have been more prone to this type of problem. And the phenomenon does create radio pulses. We may never know which of these explanations was what caused the pulse, mainly because signals caused by both phenomena are both very similar in character. What's interesting here, however, is that knowing that this happens with satellites, since we are generating new satellites and new space debris at a growing rate, this is probably something that we will see again at some point, and it's helpful to know what it is, so we don't mistake it for some new astronomical phenomenon. Sort of like the infamous lunchroom microwave oven that was initially mistaken for a new phenomenon. Relay 2 actually now takes the record as the oldest zombie satellite to ever wake up and send a signal, intentional or not. But one satellite launched a year later in 1965 is definitely intentionally transmitting. The satellite is known as Transit 5B-5, and it was part of the first satellite navigation system to be used in operations. The main user was the U.S. Navy, trying to triangulate the locations of its ballistic missile submarines, and also for navigation for surface ships. They even did some scientific surveys with the series, and was later usable by civilians for navigation. There were 41 satellites in this system over decades, but another one of the early ones, Transit 4A, was the first satellite to use an RTG, which is a radioactive power source famously used by NASA on deep space solar system missions like the Voyagers. But Transit 4A did not fare as well, as it was basically destroyed in a nuclear explosion. The infamous Starfish Prime test that also knocked out Honolulu's electrical grid with an EMP, and left a radiation belt that damaged several other satellites. Transit 5B-5 is an enigma because it only operated initially for 19 days until its navigational systems failed for unclear reasons. But this satellite to this day will transmit telemetry because it was powered by solar panels. 
but only when it's in sunlight. It does so at the frequency of 136.658 MHz, but oddly it doesn't transmit quite right, leading to the suspicion that its encoder circuits are damaged. But it does still transmit, and it's charming in its own way since the sound of the transmissions are pretty classic satellite sounds from the 60s space age. There's a link to a sound sample in the description below. Another zombie satellite is LES-1 for Lincoln Experimental Satellite 1, which was launched in 1965 by the US Air Force. This satellite never worked as designed during its intended lifetime because it failed to achieve the correct orbit required for communications. But it was a stable enough orbit that that prevented re-entry. It just wasn't what was needed, but it did return a downlink, but went silent in 1967. Then in 2012, it woke up and started transmitting again at 237 MHz, and it's not clear how or why. The satellite stopped transmitting in 1967 because repeated exposure to the Van Allen radiation belts degraded its solar panels and it could no longer charge its batteries. It was detected by multiple radio enthusiasts and they were able to determine that the satellite is tumbling once every four seconds, causing the signal to rise and fade. But it's unclear how it can transmit anything based on its design and age and where it spent its time in space. The best guess is the batteries failed. And it did it in such a way that the electrical current can now flow directly through the batteries to the transmitter. Again, the satellite transmits when in sunlight and remains in orbit. But this isn't the only satellite of the LES series to come back to life. It happened again in 2020, which ironically was also the year that the last of the LES satellites, LES-9, was decommissioned after 44 years of service. The second one to come back to life was LES-5, launched in 1967. This is a weird one because while this satellite is solar powered, it had one battery that was supposed to permanently shut the satellite down after five years of operation. It's unclear if that actually happened, if the battery was damaged or defective. Then it may have been transmitting the entire time, but no one saw it until 2020. It's least possible. But that seems somewhat unlikely. You'd think radio astronomy working at that frequency would have seen something, since it actually is a relatively quiet area of the spectrum these days, and the telescopes would have seen this as interference, along with amateur radio diehards. But not until 2020, and there really isn't a clear way how a battery and a switch that set off a kill switch presumably intended to silence the satellite after its working life to avoid needless interference would come back to life. Bad design, perhaps. But whatever happened, the signal returned. Another 1970s incident was a satellite known as AMSAT Oscar 7. This satellite has a weird story attached. It operated as it was intended from 1974 to 1981 as an amateur radio relay satellite. Once again, a battery failed and the craft seemingly fell silent. But again, it failed in such a way that the battery allowed solar panel energy directly through the circuit and the satellite becomes intermittently active when in sunlight. The fact that it was doing that was first noticed in 1982 when an anti-communist group in Poland used it to relay clandestine messages to the West and to other solidarity movement activists because the signals couldn't be tapped or traced. This satellite is still periodically picked up when in sunlight. That wasn't the only satellite that seemed dead turning out to be useful. A communication satellite called Galaxy 15, launched in 2005, went dead and drifted out of its correct orbit in 2010, where it remained for several months. The satellite then rebooted and began responding again, so the company that owned it was able to position it back to its correct orbit and resume using it. And finally a weird one that may yet come back. This is a NASA satellite known as IMAGE, or Imager or Magnetopause to Aurora Global Exploration. This satellite was launched in 2000 and unexpectedly went dead in December of 2005. It was picked up again in 2018 by an amateur radio operator, but then lost again. It's unclear what's going on with that satellite, but NASA is considering a recovery mission of some sort to get it back online. Some of the mentioned satellites are likely to remain in orbit for centuries. It'll be interesting to see how long some of them last. 
Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently giving an update on 3i Atlas. It can now be confirmed that the object is indeed an interstellar comet, and just yesterday the Hubble Space Telescope photographed it. The astronomer that did the work released the images within a few hours to get them out there for all to see, and here it is. I'll do a more full update video later this week on it, as there are other interesting developments. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.